Shalom. Today we're going to talk about praise and worship. Just how is it that we worship? We sing, we wave flags, we dance, we give tithes. Sometimes we visit the sick or the prisoner. We can take care of widows and orphans. Well, it should be everything that we do all day long. We can be in congregation or we can be in the world. Revelation 4.11 Thou art worthy, O Lord to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. What does the word worthy mean? It carries the idea of being honorable or meritorious. The word worship indicates the condition of being worthy. The suffix ship at the end is a word forming element, meaning the quality or the condition. Worship means that the person or the thing you are worshiping is worthy. It, they are honorable. They, are, they merit. They merit the worship. So in order to do that, you have to acknowledge that something or someone is greater than you are. Think about this. The value of a slave's life is in the master. The slave has no value by himself. Let's expand our understanding. In Isaiah 40, 22, it is written, He that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Speaking, of course, of Jehovah our God. He's that much bigger than we are. Revelation 6, 14, And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Praise and worship are Torah commandments, and we should be obedient to them. Psalm 103, Bless Jehovah, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. This is a command. Having a foundation in Psalm 100, a psalm of praise. Make a joyful noise unto Jehovah, all ye lands. Serve Jehovah with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that Jehovah, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. Or, as in another translation I wrote about recently, we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And here we see the elements. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful for him, and bless his holy name. For Jehovah is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. So, in a seasonal moment, we'll talk about thanksgiving. One of the words for thanksgiving is toda, and maybe you know this word. When somebody gives you something or hands you something or does you a favor and you want to say thank you, you say toda from Leviticus 7. If he offer it for a thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving unleavened cakes mingled with oil and leavened wafers, anointed with oil, and cakes mingled with oil of fine flour, fried. Besides the cakes, he shall offer for his offering leavened bread with the sacrifice of thanksgiving of his peace offerings. Another translation in Joshua 7.19. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to Jehovah God of Israel, and make confession unto him. And tell me now, what thou hast done, hide it not from he, me. From Psalm 50, another translation. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright, I will show the salvation of God. Also it is translated as a sacrifice of praise. Jeremiah 33, 11. The voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of them that say, Praise Jehovah of hosts, for Jehovah is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And of them that bring the todah, the sacrifice of praise, into the house of Jehovah, for I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first, saith Jehovah. So the word todah comes from a root word yada, and as Jacob's wives are bearing children, they name them for a certain feeling that they have or a certain concept that comes to them as they are bearing this child. Leah's fourth son, Genesis 29, 35. And she conceived again, and she bare a son. And she said, 
I will now praise Yehovah. Therefore she called his name Yehuda and left bearing. She named his name praise. Again, the concept of confession goes with this verb. Leviticus 16.21 And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. From Psalm 9, verse 1, I will praise thee, Jehovah, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. From Psalm 57, 9, I will praise thee, Jehovah, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. Now at the very root of the idea of yada, to praise and offer thanks, is the word yad, which means hand. Psalm 63, 4. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. Psalm 134.2 Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless Jehovah. Psalm 141 verse 2 Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. The concept of lifting up hands is repeated in the New Testament. 1 Timothy 2.8 I will, therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. So this is a position of lifting up hands that signifies thanksgiving and confession and obedience and submission and surrender. Exodus 23:22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to thine enemies and an adversary to thine adversaries. Again, in James 4, 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Here is the concept of confession. Again, thanksgiving includes confession. Second Chronicles 6, 24 and 25. And if thy people Israel be put to the worst before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall return and confess thy name, and pray and make supplication before thee in this house. Then hear thou from the heavens, and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest them to their fathers. Now the Greek word for confession is homoloreo. You can see the two parts of it. Homo meaning the same, and legeo meaning to speak like logos. Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth Adon Yeshua, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The word for thank you in Greek has a prefix on it, ex homolageo, because it has to ex, it has to exit your mouth. Matthew 11.25 At that time Yeshua answered and said, I thank thee. When we confess, when, when we bring God's word back to him, when we agree with his word, we are thankful. I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Again in James 5. 16. Confess your faults to one another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So this is the concept of thanksgiving, hands raised, giving praise, confession, agreeing with God's word, and being obedient. The next piece we see in Psalm 100 is praise. The Hebrew word for praise is tehillah, Exodus 15:11. Who is like thee, O Jehovah, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Psalm 22, 3. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praise of Israel. It does not say the praise of your people. It says the praise of Israel. Israel is his people. Isaiah 43, 21. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Isaiah 62, 7, And give him no rest till he establish, and till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Oh, for that day. 
Psalm 33, 1. Rejoice in Yehovah, O you righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. We'll come back to this verse later. The root for Tehillah is the word Halal. It's a verb. And you know it because you find it in the word Hallelujah. Hallelu is a command form. Praise, yeah. Praise, yeah. It's a command form. Psalm 104.35. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless thou, Yehovah, O my soul. Praise ye, Yah. Hallelujah. Revelation 19.1 And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven, saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Psalm 34.2 My soul shall make her boast in Yehovah. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Psalm 64, verse 10. The righteous shall be glad, Yehovah, and trust in him. And all the upright in, in heart shall glory. So this concept of praising, we make a boast in something, we glory in something, it's his glory. For example... Genesis 12:15. The princes also of Pharaoh saw her, speaking of Sarah, and commended her. They spoke praise of her before Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. Now these are some different kind of translations. It's the same word Hallel, and we'll see how it's related. For Samuel 21:13, and he changed his behavior. This is David before them, and feigned himself mad in their hands, and scrabbled on the doors of the gate, and let the spittle fall down upon his beard. He was trying to get out of there. Psalm 73, 3, For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Jeremiah 46, 9, Come up, ye horses, and rage, ye chariots. Let the mighty men come forth, the Ethiopians and the Libyans, that handle the shield, and the Lydians that handle and bend the bow. So these are quite different from the idea of praising. How is this connected to this root? Well, it's connected by making a lot of noise. And even in English, you can hear the same sounds, the h huh and the l. And it's translated in Zechariah 11.3. There is a voice of the howling of the shepherds, for their glory is spoiled, a voice of roaring of young lions, for the pride of Jordan is spoiled. If you have ever been to or seen any Middle Eastern party, there's a certain noise that the women make. It's a very high-pitched la-la-la-la-la. I'm not going to do it here. The idea of halal, of making this noise, it's an anapmatapoeic. The word sounds like the action, la, 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 something like this. For them, it's a positive thing. They are giving praise. Deuteronomy 32, 11. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him and kept him as the apple of his eye. So we have this idea of making this great noise because God is worthy of being announced, of being talked about, of being proclaimed. Now there's another word interesting that comes from this root, which is halal, and you only see it in one place, in Isaiah 14, 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? Now Lucifer means light bringer, and it is a Latin translation of the Greek word used in the Septuagint. So how they went from the concept behind the change of howling to shining, it's a bit of a stretch, but the people who did the translation, they were Jews, and they understood their language, and they made that decision to change the name of this being from being based on a howling, because he surely makes a lot of noise, to the idea of him shining, which is also a true description of him. We're going to move on to the blessing. The root for the word blessing is barach or berach in Genesis 1:22. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. Genesis 2, 3. 
and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. It is the first thing in creation to be sanctified, to be set apart and holy, and that is Sabbath. Some more blessings, Genesis 12, 3, And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Genesis 14, verses 19 and 20. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. Speaking, of course, of Melchizedek. Now the root, Berech, Barach, comes from the physical word for knee. Genesis 24, 11. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. Psalm 95, 6. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before Jehovah our Maker. Isaiah 45, 23. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. Quoted again in Philippians by Paul, chapter 2, verse 10, that at the name of Yeshua, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth. Yes, it's an Old Testament scripture. 1 Kings 8. 54. And it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying all this prayer and supplication unto Jehovah, he rose from before the altar of Jehovah, from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven. Solomon was praying at the time of sacrifice. He was on his knees. 1 Kings 18.42. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel and he cast himself down between the earth and put his face between his knees. He is praying for rain. Second Kings one thirteen. And he sent again the captain of the third fifty with his fifty. And the third captain of fifty went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him and said unto him, O man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these fifty, fifty thy servants be precious in this sight. He is pleading with Elijah for his life, because the first two groups of fifty, Elijah called down heaven, and they were fried. So we have another position, because God is worthy. That is a position of being on our knees. It is a position of subservience, a position where we acknowledge where the power is. It is a position of focus. It is a position of supplication. The knees also represent a position of adoption. Genesis 30, verse 3. And she said, Behold my maid Bilhah, go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees. I'm going to adopt this child, that I may also have children by her. Genesis 48, 12. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth, his father Jacob is about to bless these children, Ephraim and Manasseh, and he says he is adopting them. And also, we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Daddy. Well, it says Father. Galatians 4, 6. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Again, speaking of Melchizedek. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him. Who blessed whom? Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. As it is written in Hebrews 7.7, 7, And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better, or the greater, or the superior. That is why the blessing is received on the knees. On the other hand, we have this interesting concept where the lesser appears to be blessing the greater. Genesis 47, 7. And Joseph brought in Jacob his father and set before him Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Jacob is much older than Pharaoh and he is also a representative of Jehovah. So maybe in that sense he is considered to be greater. 
1 Kings 8.66, on the eighth day he sent the people away, speaking of Solomon, and they blessed the king and went unto their tents, joyful and glad of heart for all the goodness that Jehovah had done for David his servant and for Israel his people. From a position of subservience, we bless the Lord. Psalm 34, 1. A Psalm of David when he changed his behavior before Avimelech, who drove him away and he departed. I will bless Jehovah at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Psalm 103, we looked at before. Bless Jehovah, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless Jehovah, all my soul, and forget not his benefits. If we can look at this from a position, perhaps, of a child and a mother. Clearly, the child is the lesser, the parent is the greater. But when the child makes something, draws a drawing, and brings it to the parent, and it's surely not any great work of art, but the parent is blessed. So the lesser can bless the greater. Speaking of the knees again, Isaiah 35, 3. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. From Job, thy words have upholden him that was falling, and thou shalt strengthen the feeble knees. Hebrews 12.12 12, Wherefore lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. We need to be strong in our knees so we can be on them, blessing the Lord. Now I said we would come back to this verse. Psalm 33.1 Rejoice in Jehovah, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. What does comely mean? It's an old-fashioned word, and it means that it's befitting, and, and you look good. You look good in it. So I've told you this story before, but I'm going to tell it to you again. It's a purely fictional story. This is a story of Menachem Mendel, the great hero of the Jews of Poland. He had been taken to the camps during the war, as had all the members of his little village, but somehow he had managed to escape after doing no little damage to the guard. After wandering through Europe for a few years, he appeared to his lunsman, now relocated to New York City. Some had left Poland before the war. Others had serendipitously escaped. He came and told many harrowing stories of close encounters with evil forces, of narrow escapes, of kind Gentiles, who had helped him, and of some not-so-kind Gentiles who had double-crossed him. His friends were so happy to see him, they decided to give him a gift. Look, Mendel, they said, we want to do something nice for you. We want you should have some new clothes. Look at these schmatis that you're wearing for such a long time already. Fever the tailor, he has volunteered his craftsmanship. The Rosenbergs will give you fabric from their sewing shop. It's all set. Just go by Fievel and he'll measure you. Menachem Mendel put up his hand. No, he said, I'm fine. I'm happy with what I have. It's okay. No one should go to any trouble or expense. With that, a roar of protest broke out among the townspeople. No, no, you must have a new suit. Besides that, Sadie and Izzy are getting married soon. Surely you'll want to have something nice to wear. You want to look nice for the wedding, no? Well, what could he say? Menachem Mengdel shrugged his shoulders and agreed. He went by Fievel the tailor who measured him and told him to come back in a week. After the week went by, Menachem showed up at Fievel's shop. There on the hanger was a fine-looking suit, the likes of which he had never laid eyes on. It was really true that America was the golden of Medina. The finest of everything was here. Fievel handed him the suit and motioned toward the dressing room. Go on, try it on. So off he went. There was a great deal of noise, rapping and clapping, and finally Menachem Mendel came out. The suit was still on the hanger. It's no good, he said. It doesn't fit. Fievel's eyes lit up with fire. What? What are you talking about? I measured you. It's made for you. Go try again. So Menachem Mendel went back into the dressing room. Again, noises, cluffing and slogging, and out he comes. The suit is still on the hanger, and his head is hanging low. Fievel, I'm really sorry. I have tried to put this suit on. I really tried, but oh, it just doesn't fit. That does it, said Fievel. Show me what the problem is. You will get dressed right here before my eyes. So Menachem took the suit coat off the hanger and 
and slowly began to insert his arm into the sleeve. Fievel gasped, and then his voice melted. Ay, Mendel, he said. You know, if you want that suit to fit, you're going to have to take off your old clothes first. And that is truly the way it is for us. Praise becomes us. It makes us look lovely before men and the Father. But for us to wear this garment of praise with grace and honor comfortably so that it really fits us, we must first lay aside all the negativity, the emotions, the stinking thinking, the disappointments, the disagreements, the regrets, the disillusionment, the dissatisfaction, the disenchantment, those things that eat at our core and prevent our true and full participation in life with Messiah, with Messiah who has provided us with the clothes for the coming wedding.